Hi, my name is Sarah Hankins, and I have my bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Wyoming. And I'm currently working on my master's degree in mechanical engineering, also from the University of Wyoming. I like to start things off with a quote, so my quote for today is, If you are always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be, by Maya Angelou. So today we are going to be looking at finite element analysis, and in particular, two quadratic, quadratic elements in two dimensions. So this is a problem that we are going to be taking a look at. So we are given a partial differential equation, which is the negative second partial derivative of u with respect to x equals f of x, and in our case, f of x equals x. We also know that x goes from 0 to 2. We're also given our initial and boundary conditions. Our initial condition is u of 0 is equal to 0, which means that, so u's are our displacement, so our displacement at x is equal to 0 is equal to zero, so we're fixing one end. And then our boundary condition is a partial derivative of u with respect to x at x equals two is equal to 20. So this is telling us that at x equals two, we have a force of 20 on that node. So the first step in the process is to draw the picture. So we are told that we have two quadratic elements in two dimensions, so that's why we are only dealing with a straight line is because we're in two dimensions and then we have our two elements. And what a quadratic element means is that we are going to have three nodes per element. So you'll notice that element one has these three nodes and element two has these three nodes. We are also told that x goes from zero to two and each node is equally spaced. So element one goes from zero to one with a node in the middle at one half and element two goes from one to two with a node in the middle at three halves. So for each node, we are going to have displacements, which are going to be represented by u naught at node one, u one at node two, u two at node three, u three at node four, and u four at node five. Now remember, we were given our initial and boundary conditions, and we were told that u of zero is equal to zero, which means that we are going to be fixing this in, and we are told that u prime at 2 is equal to 20, which means that we are pulling on this end, and what we want to figure out is how much each of these nodes displace when we apply those initial and boundary conditions. So the second step in the process is to derive or write the functions for each of our elements. So we are going to begin with element 1, and the equation that we are going to use for this is written up there in that first equation, which is the function for quadratic elements. So in our case, it's ue1 star z equals c0 plus c1z plus c2z squared. Again, this is our function for quadratic elements. Now what we are going to do is we are going to plug in each of the node locations for element one. So remember there are three nodes for element one, one located at zero, one located at a half, and one located at one and each of those are equal to the displacements at that node, so u0, u1, and u2. What we're going to do is we're going to um, put the locations of those nodes into that top equation, so which is where we get the ue1 star of 0, of 1 half, and of 1. We're going to plug that into that equation. Now you'll notice that we have three equations and three unknowns. So our unknowns in this case are c0, c1, and c2. So you can use these three equations in order to solve for those unknowns. And if you do that, you will end up with this equation down here, which we simply got this by plugging in our C0, C1, and C2 once we solve for those back into this first equation in order to get this equation. And then lastly, we want to separate out our U's. And the reason we do this is because once we separate our U's, we end up with our interpolation function. So if you look at the equation in the green box. The numbers that are in parentheses are our interpolation functions for element one. So since there are three nodes for each element, that means that we need three interpolation functions per element. You're going to do the same thing for element two, and so we're going to use that same function for the quadratic element. Again, element two has three nodes, one at one, one at three halves and one at two, and so you're going to plug these numbers into that first equation, and then we have three equations again with three unknowns, so you can solve for C3, C4, and C5 with these three equations, and then plug those back into the first equation, and if you do that you end up with this equation down here, 
Remember again, we want to separate out the u's in order to get our dis or in order to get our interpolation functions. And once you do that, you end up with this equation in the green box and our three interpolation functions for element two. The third step in the process is we want to determine the interpolation function matrix, the B matrix, the element stiffness matrix, and the F matrix for each element. So we're going to begin with element one. And so first we begin by getting our interpolation function matrix. And so what this is, is we simply pulled the interpolation functions from that equation and put it into matrix form. Next, we need to get our B matrix. And so to do this, we take the partial derivative of our interpolation function matrix with respect to Z. And if you do that, you end up with this new matrix. Then we need to get our element stiffness matrix for element one. And so to do that, we use this equation, which is the integral of B transpose times B. Remember, we solve for our B matrix up here. And so if we plug that in, we end up with an integral that goes from zero to one. Again, that's because element one goes from zero to one. This is our B matrix transpose, and then this is our B matrix. And if you solve all that, take the integral, you end up with this new matrix over here, which is our element stiffness matrix for element one. Finally, you need to get your F matrix for element one. And to do that, we use this equation here, which is the integral of our interpolation function matrix times F of X. Remember, we were told in the problem statement that F of X is equal to X. And so we plug that in to get this new equation or this new matrix over here. Again, the integral goes from zero to one. Now what we did in order to get this is f of x, which is equal to x in two dimensions, x is also equal to z. So you can simply factor in the x into the your interpolation functions right here. So we have x times one minus x and then one minus two x. We got that from our interpolation function matrix, multiplied it by x, and change the z's to x's. Now if you integrate that between 0 and 1, you end up with your f matrix for element 1. You will do the same thing for element 2. So this is our interpolation function matrix. Oops, let me go back. This is our interpolation function matrix for element 2. Remember, again, we pulled that from our equations. Then we get our B matrix, which was taking the partial derivative of our interpolation function matrix with respect to z. And then we will solve for our element stiffness matrix, again for element two, and our F matrix for element two using all the same equations that we use for element one. The only difference would be that our integral for element two goes from one to two because element two goes from one to two. Now the fourth step in the process is we want to merge our element stiffness matrices and our F matrices for each of the elements into a global matrix. So we are going to begin by merging the element stiffness <coughs> matrices into a global matrix. And so these were the element stiffness matrices we got for each element. And they take the form of K11 at 1, K12 at 1, K13 at 1, K21 at 1, K22 at 1, K23 at 1, K31 at 1, K32 at 1, and K33 at 1. And then our, for element two, it's going to follow the same form, except now we have a superscript two instead of a superscript one. Now again, we want to merge these into a global matrix. So you'll notice that these nine terms here are for our element stiffness matrix for element one. And these nine terms here are the element stiffness matrix for element two. Now remember, we had our node one. We had a node for element one and a node for element two that were shared which is why we add these two together here. And so if you plug everything in, you end up with your global stiffness matrix, which is given right here with all the values in it. We're gonna do the same thing for our F matrix for each element. And so in this case, they are going to take the form of F naught at one, F one at one, and F two at one for element one. And then for element two, it's gonna be F two at two, F three at two, and F four at two. We're going to assemble our global F matrix. And so again, element one and element two share a common node right here, which is why we add these two together. And then if you plug all the numbers in, you end up with this final F matrix. Finally, we are going to plug them into the overall equation, which is our global stiffness matrix K times our displacements U equal F 
plus Q. Q are our forces. So if we plug everything in, this is our global stiffness matrix. These are our displacements at each of our nodes. And this equals our global F matrix right here, plus our Q matrix, which I will talk about how we solve that in the next slide. So the fifth step is we need to apply our boundary conditions. We are told that u at x equals 0 is equal to 0, so this means that our displacement at u0 is 0, 0, so we're holding this in fixed. And then we are also told that u prime of 2, x equals 2, is equal to 20, which means that right here at x equals 2, we have a force of 20. Now remember, forces have to be equal and opposite, and they have to sum to 0, which means we have to have a negative 20 pound force over here at the first node for element 1. So now we need to apply these boundary conditions into our matrices. So since we have u0 equal to 0, we are going to set the first row and the first column equal to 0, except we are going to leave that diagonal matrix number right there. Again, we are going to set u0 equal to 0, and then we are told that q4 at 2 is equal to 20, so we plug that into our q matrix, and q0 at 1 is equal to negative 20, so we plug that in here. All the rest are zeros. And then the last step is we want to solve for our u's or our displacements. So we're simply going to rearrange that equation. So in order to solve for our displacements over here, so we invert our global stiffness matrix K, and then we multiply it by our F matrix plus our Q matrix, which is why we have the negative 20 here, and we add the 20 over here. Once you solve for those two, you should end up with u0 equaling to 0, u1 equaling to 11, u2 equals 21.8, u3 equals 32.4, and u4 equals 42.7. Again, this just tells us how much each node is going to displace when we apply those initial and boundary conditions. So that is how you do finite element analysis for two quadratic elements in two dimensions.